We're live. Great. Well, welcome everyone to the uh, WebRTC Hangout. Uh, we're looking forward to some really good questions today. We've already had some good stuff on Moderator. Um, we're going to talk a bit about the basics of, of WebRTC, you know, what it is, what it can do for you, and uh, how you can use it now, how you can get started. Um, and uh, first, I'd, I'd like to, uh, to introduce you to the people here. Yeah, my name is Sam Dutton. I'm a developer advocate for Chrome uh, for Google based in London. And uh, yeah, just learning about WebRTC. It's a fantastic technology. So I've been talking to these guys from the team. So over to uh, Mountain View. Uh, if you could introduce yourselves, uh, starting, with, uh, starting with Ray. Hi, my name is Supreme Brother Ray, and I'm a technical solutions engineer on the WebRTC Chrome team. And uh, pass it over to Ronghua. Hey, this is Longhua Wu. Uh, I'm also a software engineer in the WebRTC Chrome team. Yeah, and hi, I'm uh, Eric Bioman. I work on our Chrome Developer Relations team. I specialize in HTML5, kind of help developers learn all the cool new stuff in HTML5. Um, of course, there's plenty of that, and uh, also contribute a lot to HTML5Rocks.com, which is our one of our developer sites geared towards the HTML5 development. Yeah, a great site, um, and I'll just little put a, uh, a URL for that. Um, Eric, while you're there, um, I was just wondering if we could uh, look at the uh, demo that you produced earlier with uh, with Pete to show off uh, some of the features sure. of WebRTC and just maybe you could talk us through that a little bit. Yeah, so for those that aren't familiar with sort of what WebRTC is, we, Pete and I shot an entertaining, to say the least, uh, screenshot yesterday uh, for you guys just to sort of show off what WebRTC is um, in, in a fun kind of interesting way. So I think he's working on dialing that up right now. Oh uh, yeah, I can see it. Cool. Right, and, and just in case people are not aware Magic, oh, the magic of WebRTC. That's great. Thank you very much, Pete and Eric. <laughs> so, yeah. so as the directions have there, there's a there's a demo that we'll talk a little bit about uh, maybe in a bit. But there's a at, at app rtc.appspot.com um, is a is a sample app that you can test out that is exactly what we just showed you, which is um, establishing a connection with someone else. You saw Pete and I do a real time uh, video chat. Um, in the Googleplex, so obviously, you know, Googleplex has some interesting things like slides, so we decided to, to ham it up a bit, if you will. Um, he got me a, a water in an interesting way. But uh, that just goes to show you, it's all in the browser, right? We were just hitting a URL um, without any plugins or anything, doing real-time uh, live video chat and audio. Very cool stuff. Yeah, that's, that's really great. And uh, it, uh, it looks good, and the quality of the video is fantastic. Um, so... I guess I, I wanted to start, um, if I could, by uh, asking uh, Ray and Rongwa, you know, that's kind of a big question about, uh, you know, what are, what are we doing with WebRTC? What are the big aims for WebRTC here? So I'll, I'll start that out. Essentially, one of the main compon components um, to push Chrome as a platform is real-time communications. And to be able to do that natively in the browser, and not just Chrome, any browsers out there. So bringing this functionality, transcending operating systems, and being able to set up a call between two browsers natively. And developers essentially don't have to worry about the nitty gritty and the underlying signaling processing blocks or the how to traverse firewalls and such. You can just write your own web page and make a call. That's brilliant. Okay, so um, so at the moment we're doing stuff with uh, with real time conferencing with the kind of video uh, applications that we just saw a moment ago. Have you got any uh, wrong? Have you got any other ideas for for uh, the kind of apps that we might be seeing in the future that use WebRTC? 
Um, this is a, there's a lot of uh, poten potential uh, apps that be there. Uh, one, because one of them may be like uh, for the customer service. For example, if you go to a website, right. um, you just click on that, you can meet your customer representative. Uh, another basic ones like uh, peer to peer calls, of course. Uh, you can set up a web um, website that uh, with a button you can talk to someone else without any plugin involved. Um, yeah. Fantastic. And, uh, you can also do some uh, like uh, screen sharing or streaming your local files using these uh, technologies. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're starting to see too is like the ability for for HTML5 APIs like WebSockets, for instance, support uh, sending like binary data in, in these different these different file formats. And so you could combine that in really interesting ways now with with other stuff in the platform. So like one one idea that is is kind of compelling to me is to build like a robot that sort of you know drives itself. Um, you know I don't know put a laptop on some kind of car or something and it does oh, some cool, detection yeah. as it drives around using. The, the input it gets from the video and sort of does in real time using a web worker or something, the processing, the video processing on it. So maybe maybe still futuristic, but you know definitely doable, prototypable. Yeah, I, I can imagine a lot of uh, really good uh, education applications with this as well. You know, being able to uh, communicate teachers and students communicating uh, remotely and and taking advantage of that, and even uh, like Rongwa was suggesting. You know, just working with customers, talking customers through uh, technical support and uh, really any kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting. The, uh, the possibilities are there. Um, I just wanted to uh, quickly uh, go uh, just to show another little demo um, just to kick off. Uh, one of the really important uh, components of what people are doing with uh, WebRTC is the Get User Media API. Um, this is a way of, of uh, getting streaming media from uh, your computer and then working with the data. Um, here's a really simple example. I'll just uh, try and pop this up on screen and share it with you. Um, we have, if we can do a little screen share here, I'll see if I can get this on the Hangout. So I'm sharing a window now which uh, we can move to. and. So, <laughs> can you see me? Does yeah, it look a bit weird? You okay, so you look great. Yeah, so, as you can see, we're getting in real time a creepy, hairy ball. Um, <laughs> so we, we're getting video data directly from the camera on uh, on my machine here, and uh, doing uh, processing of the of the data in real time, and then uh, and then uh, displaying that, rendering the content immediately. Um, and as you can see, it's a kind of fun application, but uh, you can imagine there's uh, a lot of potential uh, <laughs> useful, uh, useful uh, implementations that you can get with this kind of stuff. So real-time processing of video using the data from Get User Media. That's using uh, WebGL, right, Sam? Is that right? What, like WebGL filter effects for that? Yeah, that's right. And uh, if we, I don't know if you can see this. Does this work for you? Yeah, we can see it. Yep. Cool, cool. And there you can see what we're outputting to is a canvas element there. Yep. So right there, we're seeing the output uh, rendered on a canvas element. Um, I'll put up a, uh, a link to that so anyone can uh, go to that uh, right now from the Hangout. There we go. OK. And there we go. I'll turn off screen sharing now so we don't have to see this psychedelic image of me. Um, why don't we take a uh, a question from uh, from the uh, moderator stuff that we've had today? Uh, so, yeah, starting up uh, right from the uh, the most popular question we've had so far uh, on moderator. Um, the question is, um, I'll just put the uh, the link so people can go to this page if they want to have a look and want to add questions. There we go. Um, so the first uh, question here is, can you share a timeline for recording APIs to become available? Uh, and they have a, a link uh, for a Google Groups question about that. Um, 
So, yeah, I was wondering, uh, Ray and Rongwa, could you enlighten us about this? What, what's the estimate for this at, at this stage? Uh, is this something that we can, we can, we can see on the roadmap? Yeah, definitely. I think this is definitely on our, on our roadmap. Um, from what I heard, it's we were shooting for most probably second quarter. Perhaps it might um, sneak into the third quarter. We're just totally focused right now on just making sure that everything works in a peer-to-peer -peer call and then move yeah. to the next feature sets of being able to record and, and do other things. So, so hopefully... Q2, if not Q3 of this year, we should have these recording APIs up and running. That's that's great to hear. It seems like the uh, yeah, it's it's well defined and and ready to go. That, that's great news. Um, just taking another question from from uh, moderator. Um, they're asking uh, if if there's a uh, they're asking about experimental servers. So could you run an experimental server? Uh, thus, it would be easier for people to try the technology. Uh, it would be temporarily and unguaranteed. Sorry, temporary and unguaranteed, obviously. And uh, yeah, I believe we have that in place. Yeah, is that is that correct? Yeah. Uh, in order to run the experiment, essentially you need two server, two servers. One is the uh, server for the net um, traversal. That we have uh, standardgoogle.com. That is already there. You can um, configure your peer connection to use that. Apart from that, you will need a uh, signaling server. So we do have an open source, very simple one, signaling server uh, sample in our, uh, in our website. You can see that uh, and build it yourself. Is this the peer connection server? That That's the very simple one. Right. Yeah. You can use that to test it. Um, but apart from that, the server behind the app RTC, um, the demo we just saw, mm -hmm. Um, that one we plan to open it um, uh, to open source it very soon. That's that's great to hear. Um, yeah, one thing I've failed to mention so far, a really uh, great source of information about WebRTC is uh, the uh, WebRTC site itself. I'll just add a link to that. That's uh, webrtc.org. I'm just putting that up now. So there's a, there's a lot of great information there, documentation and some demos and, uh, and yeah, links to further information and uh, blog posts and a lot of stuff that you can listen out to that gives updates uh, pretty regular. There's a really active community around WebRTC and uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, new information coming through daily. So, yeah, have a look at that and uh, it's a great place to, to get started. Um, just... Uh, Looking through the the other questions on on moderator here, um, so I, I guess this harks back to the last question: What server implementation? Sorry, what server implementations are now available to build a video chat service using WebRTC? So um, I, I believe that uh, one thing that's on the way is some kind of open sourced uh, uh, server. Is is that correct? Um, is that something we're going to see? Yeah, that's correct. That's the server I mentioned that behind the app rtc.spot.com, that uh, demo app we just saw. The right. signal server behind that, we uh, we plan to open source it uh, soon. Uh, that's really good to hear. Yeah. I couldn't resist, Sarah. I'm going to show another one of these. Uh, you know, there's any other ones available that people have built? Or is it just too soon maybe to... Yeah, I guess it's too soon, but uh, we do have a very simple one. That's what I'm mentioned. Uh, there's a um, peer connection server called in the code name. So we have it on our website, yeah, open yeah. source. That's in the uh, the project page for WebRTC. Yeah, Google right. code project page. Yeah. So Sam, you want to throw that one up too? Is is which is I think probably linked off of WebRTC.org. Right. Yeah. It's, that's one thing that I think people, as, as at least um, newcomers to this project, definitely need to understand that there's obviously the client side things that we're providing um, that will take care of, you know, capturing your microphone samples and video frames from your camera, encoding that, sending it out. And then there, there is a server component that you might have two clients who can't see each other because they're sitting behind firewalls and such. So there is this server component also that we are providing, but what people also need to understand that as if they you know want to scale this out 
they do need to perhaps spend a little bit more time thinking about how they would want to handle, you know, 1,000 calls and things like that. But, but yeah, but this is a, a good start. I think we're, we have sample applications, both obviously on the client side and on the server side. And we're going to open up a real server that we're using. Um, so hopefully these will be good building steps for people to, to start building their applications soon. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sam, I wonder if it makes sense uh, at this time to, to bring up that slide deck and show that diagram of sort of the architecture. Yeah, yeah. Let me just uh, get that. Uh, hold on a moment. Let me get that stuff. Um, How much stuff is actually going into the project, right? There's sort of the the um, the browser implementation, right, which is all uh, uh, open source, as I understand it, right? Yeah. Um, right. The browser's implementation that you know the browser's implementing, um, but there's also the, all the JavaScript APIs, which is the part where you know, the web developers come in and, and play with the, the the portion of the WebRTC that you can actually use from a, you know, an app. Um, and so Sam, I think, is trying to bring up this really nice sort of diagram showing all this. And what I usually show people is, <laughs> as soon as it gets it up, there's a lot under the hood, right? right. There's, a, there's a ton of stuff going on. And this is what you spoke to earlier, is that there's a lot of fine tuning going on. There's a lot of implementation details. And so over time, we're going to start to work on other stuff as well, right? like uh, recording, for instance. right. While I'm uh, while I'm getting this up on screen, I was wondering uh, one thing that I, I would love to hear is is uh, you WebRTC guys are uh, talking through the process of that really basic demo we saw right at the start there. You know what's going on? What's can could you talk us through the the process of of uh, actually getting making the connection and uh, getting the video from A to B and B to A again? Sure. Um. I don't know if it, should we start at the lowest level first or should we start at the highest level working down? Maybe you can think? start with uh, uh, open up a camera and uh, sure. capture the... Right, okay, so so there's two parts. Um, from the web developer's perspective, which is not what I'm going to start with, you know, they're working with JavaScript APIs and they're going to set up a call, but how going down to the very low level, you know, we have what we call the voice and video engines aspect of the WebRTC. And these are the engines starting from one end where we start grabbing microphone samples and the video frames from the camera, encode them and packetize them and send them out to the network. And on the reverse end, when we receive packets from the network, decode them and then display, render um, the decoded video frames and play out the the sound samples to your speakers. That's in a nutshell uh, what the media engines do. You know, there's different components. For example, there's an acoustic echo cancellation block and a noise suppression block on the voice engine side to provide you really good quality. This is not just about making video calls. This is about providing really, really good voice and video quality. Um, and then in addition to that, there's the codecs, the audio and video codecs that encode your raw microphone samples and raw video frames um, so that they're sent out in a, in a reasonable bit rate out to the network. And then setting a bit in conjunction with the video and audio codecs are bandwidth estimation and traffic shaping and how to adjust um, your bit rates based on network conditions. So that's all on the media layer side. And then on top of that, we want to encapsulate this so that this, you know, Web developers don't need to worry about this, and it will work on any platforms. Then on top of that sits some of how this uh, talks to the browsers, and on top of that, the JavaScript layers. Um, and maybe, Rungwa, you can speak a little about that, but the Pure Connection APIs are... Yeah, I guess you covered very well. And uh, one thing that... Uh, another thing is you if uh, you have uh, two browsers and, uh, behind the firewall, we need to find out a way to talk for them to talk to each other. That is the, that's when the uh, net traversing is kicking. Um, so we, there's uh, some uh, technique inside LibJingo. So basically you need to talk to a, s a server in a public IP, uh, with a public IP, we call it a stun server. So you talk to that server, then that server will figure out which part is reachable to you and then that is, we call it candidate. So when you collect all the candidates, you exchange the candidates with the uh, remote peer. Then remote peer knows 
how to reach you. Um, so that's when, after that, we can send the uh, media stream uh, we produced by the media engine. Um, up, so that's how a call we set up. Right, right. And and so from from the web developer perspective, you would just call these peer connection APIs, which you might see the layer that uh, Rangwa just spoke about. And then once the media is established, those that media is passed to the media engine layer underneath WebRTC. Got you. Right. I've just um, posted. It's complex. Uh, yeah, it's complex. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's pretty complex. But uh, I've just posted a link. If you can see that, the apprtc.appspot.com uh, link there. That's uh, to the uh, to the really simple demo. So if you want to take a look at the code there, that's a that's a really good place to get started. Um, I've also put up a link. You can see above that to demos.appspot.com to the. Uh, to the architecture diagram that uh, Eric was talking about. If we could, uh, I think if I can get that up on screen yes, now. Um, I'll try and do a screen share of that one. OK, so I'm, yeah, I'm showing that stuff now. Can you zoom in on the slides? Yeah, let's, um, let's try and improve that a bit. How's that? That's pretty good, yeah? A little bit more, maybe, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, that's great. How are we doing? I could even go a little bit further, maybe. Maybe that was one yeah. step over the line. OK. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, Ray, Ray and Rongwa, could you, just to you know, repeat everything you've just told me, um, can, we have a, <laughs> yeah. can we have a, just, can you talk us through this, uh, what yeah, looks in some ways a rather complex diagram, but uh, you know, uh, it, would, it would be great to, to hear from you from kind of top to bottom. Uh, What's going on in this diagram? Sure, absolutely. Um, I'll start wrong one then. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the the one thing when someone looks at this diagram is um, definitely look at the different colors and what what as a web developer as opposed to a browser implementer um, what they really need to work about or worry about. So essentially, I'm assuming most of the people coming into uh, who look at this Hangouts will be web developers and what they first need to think about is essentially the top level where you have the yellow arrows in this diagram, um, your web application and, and what they're going to essentially design, a website or a web app. And yeah. that will essentially then talk to these web APIs, which are the peer connection APIs that are currently being discussed and ratified in the um, W3W. What W? Uh, W3C. W3C, sorry, our worldwide consortium. Um, and and those are the peer connection APIs, the layer that Rongwa earlier talked about, where these will essentially set up the call, and and once the call is set up, pass the media blocks into the media engines. So then, as you move down um, the purple arrow, going into the WebRTC C++ API peer connection, this section is how the different browser vendors have to implement or worry about from Chrome to um, Mozilla to Opera. This will somewhat be um, different between the, the different, um, how they choose to implement the peer connection APIs within their browser. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, wrong, wrong. And then, so, so the web developers don't really have to worry about that. Again, we're now getting to the layer which this will be encapsulated within the browsers itself. And then the layers beneath that are um, what I mentioned about the physical media uh, engines where we handle the actual media processing of the voice and video packets, um, the different codecs to use to encode and decode, the traffic shaping, the acoustic echo cancellation blocks. So those are the lower level purple blocks. Um, and Rungwa, I'm not sure, the session management abstract signaling layer, I don't know how that quite fits in or if we need to go into that in this part or that's encapsulated by the peer connection. Yeah, this in this diagram, this is uh, this, the signaling uh, and session is part of this uh, uh, WebRTC++ API. But there's a discussion going on that might be moved up a little bit okay. uh, so that the application developers has the flexibility to choose whatever signaling protocol they want to use um, during their in their application. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad yeah. I'm glad Sam is showing this because this is like pretty it's illustrative of what the platform is doing these days, right? There's a lot of guts to it. There's a lot of core implementation stuff that the browser is taking care of for you as you look at this diagram. Everything below that in that lighter gray box, everything below those arrows is totally a black box. You don't have to worry about it. Right. Yeah. What that's a good point. Is is the JavaScript APIs that you build on top of? But they're just just keep in mind it's it's important to know that there's a lot of stuff you know built into these different HTML5 APIs now. Another example is WebGL, right? You can access the GPU and the graphics card with a couple lines of JavaScript. It's just it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculously cool, is what it is. Um, so kudos to to you know Google and the engineers at, at Google for implementing all this crazy awesome stuff for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to hear. Look, uh, I I can't resist. Sorry, uh, just. To uh, a break from the uh, technicalities for a moment, I just wanted to uh, go to uh, another demo of uh, Get User Media that I, I really like. Uh, if I can just uh, share that. A few seconds, I'll just move the video. And I just wanted to show this because, uh, again, we're, we're doing stuff with live, uh, live video data. And uh, it's, uh, I don't know if anyone remembers the uh, exploding video experiment that uh, Sean uh, Chrisman did. Uh, so here you can see me on the, on the video there. It's, I'll try and increase the size a bit. Oh. Uh, and you can see that if I click on the picture, <laughs> it explodes. And what's cool is that you can see that all those individual pieces are still rendering the video. If uh, if you can see the little the little squares are still showing live the the stuff as I move around that makes it right. a little bit clear. So I just love that you know there is so much potential for this stuff, uh, some some useful stuff and uh, and obviously some fun stuff like that as well. Um, just going back to the uh, the moderator uh, questions, uh, another one we've we've heard a lot of is uh, asking if uh, the API is going to become available on mobile devices um, and. Uh, particularly, you know, what uh, what obstacles uh, do we need to overcome uh, before we can get to that point? Uh, so, can I turn over to uh, Ryan Rongwa again? Yeah, no, definitely. I think uh, that's also one of our high priorities in the future. To once we know that this this is stabilized on the desktop platforms, we're definitely uh, we would love to move this to the mobile devices, both Android and iOS. Unfortunately, I don't. Right. I don't know of any what our exact timelines are, but I know that this is something that we would be very, very focused on in, um, in moving. So the obstacles essentially right now is, is time. You know, there's there's so many engineers, and we just need to focus on and getting this working perfectly on a on a certain platform, the desktop platforms, and then um, and then move ahead to the mobile platforms. Yeah, oh, that's that's great to hear. Oh, Sam, I think we lost your audio. Oh, sorry. Is that better? Yes. Yes. I think I'm back. Okay, good. I have a mic. Um, yeah, just uh, moving down the questions, um, I, I have another one here that uh, someone is asking uh, if we could uh, give more details about multi-peer issues. Could, could you uh, explain a little about that and uh, tell us what the, uh, the situation is? Sure. Could you let me actually just uh, could understand the question a bit? Could you give more details about multi-peer issues? So I'm going to interpret interpret this question as um, the user wants to know essentially how to set up like a video conference um, currently using. So what we allow today is um, the ability to make peer-to-peer -peer calls and. And the media is essentially relayed um, through different servers. I don't know it. It will be. I don't know if it is possible today, but it should be possible in the future to be able to render. If you have multiple video streams coming in, um, to render the multiple images. That's true, right, Rawa? Um, yeah, that's that should that sounds right. Um, I reading that this uh, questions. I'm thinking maybe. He was asking how to um, maybe have a multiple peer connections in one page. browser. 
because yeah, this yeah, is yeah. this is one issue I know of, not issue, but uh, not implemented yet. We only support one peer connection uh, um, in one page at this moment. So, but that's definitely something that that's going to be changed, and we're going to support that in the future. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Is there that's something that's that the current spec of specification talks about at all, or is it is it uh, just talking about one to one peer to peer? I, I, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I was asking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, another question we had uh, earlier on on moderator um, from uh, Clive Bolton uh, asking if the standard behind the, the API is designed more for asynchronous or, or synchronous communication. Uh, he also says, in either case, is a concept of time bounding uh, making latency predictable? You know, this this question, given that there's so many layers in WebRTC, there's the the media layer and the voice and video engine packets, which we know that, or the way it's been designed, the voice and video streams take different routes through the networks and are subjected to different latencies and paths. Um, and our engines have been designed to overcome that. You know, they will work irrespective of that. However, I'm not sure if exactly which aspect of WebRTC this question is designed to, if he's actually talking about the media layer or he's talking about the JavaScript APIs. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how to answer that. I don't know what your take on that is, Rangwa. Yeah, I, I don't have a good answer for that either. Right. Yeah. One thing, one thing I was going to uh, say that um, I'll, I'll put up a link in a moment, but uh, if people have comments and, and uh, comments on the answers that have, we've had to questions, um, if they can add comments to the uh, to the Google Plus page, uh, that would be great. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll put up a link to that in a moment. Just to speak uh, to, to that question, if he is talking about the the sort of the JavaScript you know application APIs, um, I, I pretty it's, it is an asynchronous API. Right? You're sort of adding messages, you're doing message passing, and and that's good because uh, like a lot of it, Offline APIs, IndexedDB, um, the file system API, some of these other APIs that are coming online, they're all asynchronous because there's a lot of stuff going on when you're making these calls. And the last thing you want to do is sort of freeze up your, you know, your, your JavaScript main UI thread. Um, so I think in the future, you know, you're going to see a ton of asynchronous JavaScript APIs. It's sort of the way things are going. Unfortunately, JavaScript's a, a single thread environment, so you have to do that in order to make applications that people don't you know, tear their hair out for because it's just so slow and obnoxious. Oh, uh, sure. Um, yeah, a, a question from uh, a guy called Pete. Uh, he's in Mountain View. I think that's in California. Yeah. Uh, he's asking what codec uh, is uh, Google's implementation of WebRTC encoding the, the video stream with? Uh, and what do the other browser vendors think? Uh, he says that uh, he reckons Opera is working on this as well. Um, What's what's the story? Uh, are we working with VP8, and uh, what's the what's the future there? Yes, we are we are using VP8, um, which was part of a company called Onto that Google acquired a few years back, and Google has open sourced this video codec. It's completely out there. It's part of the WebM project, and given that um, the whole objective of WebRTC is to be open we decided to go with VP8 and not have any royalty encumbered codecs to use within an open source project. So we are using VP8 um, today to, as, the, as a video codec. As far as what the other, other browsers, uh, vendors think, again, I, I don't, I can't really comment on that, but again, you know, given the fact that VP8 is open source, um, I think they're pretty much on board, but again, that's just my my personal. Um, I'm sure the the big question is interoperability and what what's going to happen with H.264. Um, that's something that you know that comes up a lot in our discussion lists. But yeah, um, yeah, and and it's just that you know that's that's big on our minds too. But again, we want to stay with an open source, royalty free yeah. codec so that anyone can use this and not have to worry about um, royalties. This kind of segues nicely into a question I'm seeing later on from Neo in, in New York City is about sort of other browser vendors, Firefox, IE, Safari, working on WebRTC and implementing in their browsers. Um, can we talk a little bit about sort of 
yeah, with absolutely. With the, with the community. Sure. And and Ron Wall cut me in, or because you might and, know you more. Have more information. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I know that we are. Um, so the peer connection APIs, for example, this is being ratified in the standard, and Mozilla is part of that. Um, so we're, this is just not solely, you know, a Google initiative. We we start this, but we would like other vendors, or other browser vendors, to obviously. Um, use WebRTC. So we're working with Mozilla, um, and we're also working with Opera. Um, IE and Safari right now, I don't, I don't know what the engagement level is, especially with IE at this point. Um, so I, I, essentially, I don't know, and I can't make much comments on it. Um, same thing with Apple, Safari. I believe they're also actually, um, or people from Apple are part of the standards. Um, I don't know if they're going to go with WebRTC and Safari, but I know I think I believe they're working on the standards also. So, so essentially to to wrap that up, uh, Mozilla and Opera are definitely currently on board. Apple, I believe, is uh, working on the standards, and I'm not sure about IE. Cool, cool. While, while we're on the subject of browsers, uh, a question a lot of people ask me re pretty regularly is, uh, when might we see this in in Chrome stable? Uh, is there, do we do we have any sense of when that might happen? Yeah, no, that's that's a really good question. So right now it sits behind a flag. There's essentially two main things um, before we can you know completely open this up, and and it's not behind a flag. One is the fact that the peer connection APIs are still somewhat in a state of flux. It's it's still being ratified. Um, so once that is in a state, maybe. The, in the next few months, my guess, but I might be completely wrong. So in the next few, so I think we're currently on M18 that's been open, maybe by M20, M21. They should be uh, not sitting behind a flag. That's that's just my guess. And the second aspect of this is also we need people to try it out. If there's any major issues out there, we would like to fix those before um, opening this up. By yeah. default. And this is my plea to you developers out there. Like the reason a lot of these APIs exist behind you know, about dot flags or behind the flag in general is is for you to try them out. They're still being work actively worked on. Um, and so this is exactly, you know, this is my pitch to install Chrome Canary, right? This is our, our nightly build of Chrome. Install the Jev channel build of Chrome. Um, we actually rely on you guys very heavily to, you know, submit bugs, to tell us what's wrong with these APIs, to to test them in the field, so to speak. Um, even if it's just a prototype, um, it's, it's really useful information. And of course, you can always file bugs. Chrome is an open source project, and we very much look at those. <laughs> I look at Issue Tracker every day of my life. <laughs> That's good to hear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, uh, I know the feeling. Um, we, uh, we had another question here. Uh, let's just uh, look down the, the list of stuff here. Um, Someone asking about uh, WebSocket API uh, to transfer audio and video. Um, from what I believe, uh, uh, this this has been po possible in uh, in Chrome. I think since uh, Chrome 16, and uh, on the server side, there are some libraries that uh, that support uh, that support that. So uh, there are going to be, I believe, uh, some demos at some stage about this. Uh, maybe Eric, can you uh, enlighten us on this? I can. Uh, so, so this is something I've actually been interested in for a long time is to be able to, um, there's not really a good solution for, for streaming audio. So I, uh, I wanted to see if it was possible uh, just as a prototype to build something that used w the WebSocket API. So WebSockets now support sending binary data. You can send a, a file or a blog, um, which is exactly what you need for low latency you know, uh, transfer of, of sort of an audio type file. Um, so using an, a WebSocket, a binary WebSocket, with um, the Web Audio API that's in Chrome, um, what that allows you to do is basically send uh, small chunks of an audio file across the WebSocket and sort of uh, a poor man's streaming, as I like to call it. And then on the other side, when on the receiver side, you can use the Web Audio API to schedule precisely when each chunk should play. So as the receiver starts, starts to get these chunks, you start to append them on and schedule them at precise times um, when they were supposed to play in the initial song. And so it, it pretty much just sounds like uh, you know, the song is playing straight through. So it's, it's very much a proof of concept, and I plan to write an article on it for HTML5 Rocks. So 
stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, combining WebSocket API with, with the Web Audio API, you can definitely do um, audio and video streaming. There's also uh, another API that's in, in Chrome and being um, spec'd out. It's called the Media Source API. And essentially what that allows you to do is um, sort of something similar, use a video tag or an audio tag and sort of um, use XHR or XML HTTP request to pull down uh, chunks of audio or video and then append those to a video tag. So that's also kind of a, a poor man streaming, if you will, but it, it does do the job and, and it allows you to, uh, I think what the question is sort of getting at is to do some things like streaming audio and video. Yeah, I've seen some uh, some great demos of that stuff and uh, lots of possibilities are kind of, I don't know, if that's the word, better kind of fake, almost adaptive streaming uh, yeah. model for that, different different uh, uh, different video depending on yeah, the. So there's uh, a couple situation. APIs that play now that allow you to do similar things, but different use cases, right? There's WebRTC for certain use cases and direct peer-to-peer -peer connections. Web sockets do similar things to that, but different use cases. And then there's these other APIs that are sort of at play too. So it's kind of choose your own battle and and you know ah. use the right technology or API yeah. for the job that you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. We've had a, another question come in from California, which is interesting to me, actually. Um, so, you know, we have a stack of new APIs, and uh, what this uh, this guy's wondering is, is are these going to be useful for other stuff? You know, is is there some other stuff that we can do with all this other than video? So, I suspect there is. So, yeah, if we could uh, get some com some ideas about that, it'd be great. Yeah, I'm going to disappear because I need to get. I'm going to be five seconds. I need to uh, get my power cable. Two seconds. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we're this started out out as a project of real time communication, voice and video, uh, chatting bef between two browsers. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's other applications like streaming, and I'm not sure exactly if, if anyone, I don't know, you might know if anyone in our engineering is specifically working on, on streaming audio and video also in addition, but the, the tricky part about two-way communication is uh, there can be no delay. You know, with streaming, you can perhaps wait a bit, let it buffer up, and, and let it go, but it's a little trickier when you want to have a two-way call, but you can't have any delay because um, if not, people will be stepping over each other. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Um, like, uh, if you look at the spec of the uh, Stream API, they also mention that uh, you can use the camera as a source. You can also use the local file as a source. So, with that, you might be able to do like uh, uh, screen sharing or uh, uh, presentation or uh, those kind of stuff. Right. Besides the video. And even, you know, to localize it, for example, allowing the fact that we can capture video frames from a person's laptop, there could be so many other applications as perhaps camera resolutions increase. You could do some face recognition. You could do some uh, eyeball tracking. All these other cool, neat effects that you could add to your, to your applications. Um, yeah, that would be great, that stuff. Yeah, stuff that's, you know, in the past been really expensive and, and you know, right. really not widely accessible. Fantastic. Right. Okay, so here's a question that I knew we would get, uh, again, from California. Uh, someone asking if uh, if Google Plus Hangouts, uh, what we're doing now, is going to use WebRTC. Is that going to happen in the uh, the next six months? They're saying, I don't want to use a plugin anymore. WebRTC will be awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's... That's the whole purpose of this project is, you know, people open up their browsers and make a voice and video call without having to download an extra plugin. Uh, with respect to internally what Hangouts is doing, I actually don't know. We're, we're completely separate projects. Um, yeah. I'm sure at some point there will be, um, you know, overlap. But at this point, I don't know of what the plan of Hangouts is and, and whatnot. I don't know if you, but yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm sure there's people already talking about that at Google, you know, one day hopefully yeah. uh, we can move to a a native client yeah. within the browser. So at the, these are separate projects at the moment, at the moment, is that right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Correct. okay. Um, so more, more questions from moderator. Um, first, I would really like to show us another uh, slightly foolish, well, I shouldn't say foolish, but entertaining uh, 
Hang on, if I can get a, another uh, get user media. Uh, hold on a moment. Let's have a look. Got something nice here. Okay, so I'll just uh, screen share this again. And so here we have uh, a kind of photo booth like application. Can can you guys see that uh, over in, in Mountain View? Yep. Yes. So if I click this to begin. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, I just love that. It's a really fun little app and uh, just beautifully implemented. Uh, again, doing doing lovely stuff uh, to uh, get uh, get content from from uh, your own from your own camera. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a, some really imaginative material coming out. Um, just to go down the the uh, the questions, uh, one of the things I, I have heard a lot is is people asking about uh, about security. Uh, we have uh, uh, Luc uh, Tribole, I think pronounced, uh, and he's saying, what about the security and the flux encryption? Uh, can we have uh, a comment on that? Um, I heard the first part, what about security? What was the second part? Flux, flux encryption. Uh, flux encryption. I actually don't know what flux encryption is. Okay. Uh, but the one thing that... Um, so I just like to spring impossible questions on you. I, just make <laughs> <laughs> I would Google it right now, but... Uh, yeah. Um, but one thing about the the voice and um, video streams by default today, um, I believe we're using secure RTP protocols, which has yeah. been enabled by default. So that's uh, in terms of security of the RTP stream. So that that is encrypted today. One thing that's not there today, and I'm actually not sure if um, even the specification says anything about this, but uh, being able to access the camera sort of just by making a JavaScript call, right? There's no, uh, currently there's no sort of permission dialogue that comes down that says to the user, do you want to, you know, give this app access to your camera or, or deny that access? Um, and of course, that, that happens with a lot of the APIs now, right? There's some kind of permission level. Um, they're sort of on the drive-by web that the user has to buy into. Um, to allow an application to use one of these APIs. So that's not there today. I don't know if, if that's being um, worked out, but I'm, I'm almost certain the spec doesn't really mention that. So possibly in the future that, that could come, right? So where the user has to manually sort of... Actually, I believe there's a this. team working mm -hmm. on, uh, uh, on that for Chrome. Okay. It's called uh, Camera UI. It basically allow you to uh, uh, grant the access to the camera or big camera Oh, oh, that's cool. So yeah. yeah, right, right now it's it's worth mentioning that if you have, I guess, multiple cameras attached to the laptop or, or your your setup, then it yeah. picks the first. It uh, picks default. the default one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I know oh, there's cool. a team work on that, but I don't know the detail when. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So look look forward to that sometime. Yeah, I think uh, am I right in saying that uh, using the input element, uh, we have an implementation on uh, Chrome for Android now, so. That's really cool to be able to use camera. Is that is that correct, Eric? Why? That's true. That's true. Um, I believe Android um, Honeycomb and then now Chrome for Android has the ability to use a, a file input essentially, and you can specify a certain accept type attribute on that to say you want to access the camera or, the, or record a video. Uh, it's essentially just uploading or, or taking a snapshot in time and being able to upload that uh, to the server or what, whatever you want to do with it. Um, where this is different, where WebRTC is different, where Git user media is different, is that you can capture in real time and then do real time effects on something. So um, that's cool. Hopefully, you know, one day Android, um, Chrome for Android, could have this ability as well to do the, the Git user media. But we talked a little bit about that earlier. So. Okay, cool. We we mentioned uh, earlier uh, uh, some uh, progress with uh, WebSocket. Um, Another question from, from Jeff in, in Toronto. Uh, video conferencing is cool and all, but what's the status of the data stream API? Uh, B2B web sockets, web sockets, sorry, would be awesome. Uh, do we have a, a comment about that? Or do you think we've uh, covered that in the earlier web socket stuff? Video conferencing is cool. 
Um, as I know, the data stream API hasn't been uh, uh, well defined by the spec yet. So before that, probably. Okay. Yeah, that's what I uh, know from the spec. Okay, so we'll see. Okay, moving down the list there. Yeah, I mean, we th there is another question from from uh, Luke. Uh, asking when the server code from appRTC.appspot.com is going to be released. Uh, we did mention that the uh, code's going to be open sourced, uh, and that's kind of imminent, yeah? Yes. Yep. Cool, cool. Uh, quickly moving on, we've got about uh, five minutes left. Um, so, yeah, um, we had a question from, another question from Clive Bolton in Seattle. Uh, is asking if uh, WebRTC nudging the browser to incubate server-ready JavaScript engines. Um, is, I mean, is this something that's part of the WebRTC work at Google, or is this kind of uh, really a, a diff something different? Hmm. Uh, you know, WebRTC is a firewall traversal for media, and that normally requires some sort of known server on a public IP. Um, so not knowing much about Node.js, I think that would be very challenging. But again, I, I'm not an expert. So I don't think we're, yeah, so I, I don't think we would be nudging anyone. Um, yeah, cool. Again, the server implementation, it's, if you look at our peer connection server example, you know, it's at, at a high level, it should be, totally up to the user. It's it's not like there has to be one way to do this. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, okay, quickly moving down down the questions here. Uh, it's something that occurred to me, actually. Uh, you know, how do you stop the stream without killing the tab? Uh, I, I can imagine, you know, moving from a page where you're uh, getting a video input and then doing some browsing, and of course the, you know, the video is still on. What's, what's the story with that? Um, I'm not exactly, I think you should be able to use, remember the video tag, but I haven't. Um, I mean, I guess this is something we could do with get user media. It's in a sense, uh, it's it's uh, the way you use it. Yeah, it's not it's not essentially part of uh, WebRTC. It's uh, yeah, it's how, no, and how you implement the use of get user media and uh, right. working with the page Sam visibility APIs. <laughs> <laughs> As we speak, did you hear your part? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I experienced the same thing. I think um, there is like a. You can call stop on, on the stream. I don't know if it actually does anything in Chrome today, but it's probably probably just a bug, to be honest. I, I kill yeah. my tabs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we should, uh, you should file that down. Cool. Since you I will. Up. Yeah, all right. It's my problem. It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I should have shut up. Uh, <laughs> which seeks nicely into the next question, again, from uh, this guy, Pete, in Mountain View. Uh, he's wondering, if, a really good question, uh, if if people find bugs, what do they do? Where do they file bugs uh, in relation to uh, the components of WebRTC? So we do have a website, the first one being webrtc.org. Um, there's a link to there where you can actually go and it will help you. It's, it's a ways forward, but if you directly want to go to the code base, it's webrtc.googlecode.com and uh, you will see an issues list and you can file a bug there. Um, I, we should probably put that up somewhere. Uh, if it's not already up there, but but the best way is webrtc.org. But uh, if this is a Chrome bug, probably just file bug in a Chrome. Right. Um, so yeah, yeah. This really yeah. Nice. It's for those who haven't seen it, crbug.com is great. <laughs> really nice short URL, easy to remember. Um, and if you do file that in the Chrome issue tracker, you know, and if it needs to go someplace else, we can, you know, people do triage those regularly, so we can put that where it needs to go. Cool, cool. Okay, I think that we're going to wrap up soon. Uh, a couple of things. Um, if people are, are watching this stream, uh, could they plus one the post uh, so we get an idea of how many people are out there? That would be really helpful for us so that we can uh, work on these Hangouts and uh, you know find out who's watching and, so, and get an idea of that. And also, uh, another thing if you could do for us is, is to add uh, yeah, Chrome developers uh, to your circles. Uh, that would uh, you know, be a great way for us to communicate events like this. Uh, so we're planning on more Hangouts uh, on, uh, on various APIs and, and uh, web-related subjects. 
Um, so yeah, just uh, moving back to the last stuff we've got here. I think I'll just uh, check what else we've got. Eric uh, and Ray and Rongwa, have you got have you got anything else you'd particularly like to add before we wrap up today? No. Um, yeah. Again, if you have any issues or um, bugs that you want to file, please definitely go to either Chrome Bugs or WebRTC.org. Um, we'd love to love to hear from you and, and let us know how this, how you, how from a developer perspective, um, what do you guys think about it? Yeah, and yeah. what Sam just mentioned, the great way to get in contact with us too is through our Plus page if you want to sort of open a channel and, and communicate back and forth about some of this stuff. Um, yeah. Sam, I wonder if it's if it's for people that missed the, the demo at the beginning of the WebRTC video, if it's worth playing again um, as we start to wrap up. That would be great. That's a really good idea. Yeah. We talked we talked a lot about WebRTC, and you know, it's it's actually good to see it in practice. Yeah, that would be that would be really nice to see that. Just to finish up uh, on what looked to me like uh, Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. Uh, <laughs> that was a hard day at work, man. I don't know. If you're <laughs> Geez, that looks scary coming down the tube. <laughs> hey, Eric, what's up? Hey, this is what RTC stuff? It seems pretty cool, right? Yeah, it is. I'm kind of thirsty, man. You know, I think I can. I'll be right there. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. That's really nice. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thank you so much to Ray and Rongwa for, for coming today and, and talking about WebRTC with us. And uh, please, yeah, add your comments to the post or get in touch with us and file bugs as you hit them. And uh, we're really looking forward to, to it's going to be some great imaginative stuff, as we've already seen uh, people doing really good things with WebRTC. So thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, and thanks, Eric. And thanks to the invisible man, Pete LePage, who's uh, <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> See you guys next right. time. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.